You never forget where you were when a history-changing tragedy takes place. I remember who I was with, where I was, and what I was doing when I heard the news about 9-11. There are events in the lives of several generations of Americans that have this same seriousness. When this happens, everyone is caught off guard, from city workers to actors, with no warning they could be in the process of doing anything, anywhere. Completing what needs to be completed can be emotionally draining, a person's mind torn between task at hand and the mystery of an unknown future. Sherwood Schwartz was the creator of Gilligan's Island. He had a very hard time selling the show to studio executives because they thought it was stupid and wouldn't risk the money producing the show. Not to be deterred, he adjusted characters and scripts and continued to push studio executives to get it on the air. There are two pilots for Gilligan's Island. The one I'm going to discuss today is the first, much lesser known pilot. There were several cast changes made between the first and second pilot. The actors that we grew up with in the roles of the Professor, Ginger, and Mary Ann were not yet part of the cast. In an effort to instill some realism in the look of the show, Schwartz had convinced CBS to sign off on sending the cast and crew to an island in Hawaii to film this first pilot. On the next to last day of filming, the lives of that ensemble and the whole of the U.S. population would change forever. On November 22, 1963, while filming on location, they were told that the president had been shot. Mr. Schwartz later said, Nobody believed it. It sounded too preposterous to be true. Over the course of the day, they heard the events unfold, listening to the radio between filming and rehearsals. Members of the cast and crew stated that it seemed too surreal to be true. Eventually, later that day, they learned that President Kennedy had been killed as they heard Lyndon Johnson being sworn in as president. Schwartz later stated, I still don't know how we were able to complete filming that day. Not that there's anything we could do, but it gives an extra measure of helplessness when you're so far away. Bob Denver remembered that right there on the beach, they all hung their heads and said a prayer and somehow stumbled through the remaining scenes. It was so surreal, he said, to be in such a beautiful place and have this happen. The next day was Saturday, the final day of filming, and they were supposed to wrap filming at Honolulu Harbor. When they arrived there, they learned that the harbor was closed Saturday and Sunday as a period of mourning for the slain president. At that time, the earliest they could film on the harbor was Monday. They were informed later that the official day of mourning was to be Monday, but their permission to film could be transferred to Tuesday. This created a new problem as the entire cast and crew were slated to fly back to the mainland Saturday night and Sunday morning. The original shooting schedule was only four days, and they were already over budget. Through a series of frantic phone calls, Schwartz was able to secure the funding from CBS to extend their hotel stays and flights. That Sunday, while cast members waited to get back to filming, they watched in further confusion from the lobby of their hotels as Lee Harvey Oswald was shot and killed in color. When it was in heavy rotation on TV, it seemed like there were a lot more. Maybe because of how much I watched the show. If you thought this was good, give it a thumbs up, please. If you like my videos, subscribe to my channel. There are more on the way. But if you do none of that, thank you for watching and have a great day.